we believe is what we know is possible. You behave like you believe. I want you to be free. I know you can be free, and I know you have inside of yourself the power to be free, period. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show. Jade Washaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Guys, we are the number one, number one podcast on Apple. That is crazy. As a co-host of the Ramsey Show, Jade Warshaw, it's great to have you here. And that's how this works. You're going to be what is known as a responsible, financially literate adult. You can surely do it. You can tell me you won't do it, but do not ever tell me you can't. You can do this. All things are possible. Good morning, Church by the Glaze. How you guys doing this morning? Is anybody glad to be at church right now? Can you make some noise? For those of you that may not know who I am, my name is Pastor Charlie Hughes. I have the privilege of leading the young adult movement here at Church by the Glaze called Rally. But maybe you're here for the first time or for maybe the first time in a long time and you see this dumpster on fire on the screen behind me and you're like, what the heck is going on right now? Allow me to explain. We're currently in a teaching series here at Church by the Glades entitled, Everything is Fine. How many know that sometimes we pretend like everything is fine when life looks a little bit like a dumpster fire? We believe that in order for 2024 to be the year that you want it to be, and that God wants it to be. We must not deny the dumpster fires, the dysfunction in our lives, but we must deal with them, amen? So today, you're in for a treat. Look to somebody you're sitting next to and tell them, you're in for a treat. Because we have brought in a guest speaker who's really more like family here at Church by the Glades to speak on a dumpster fire, an area of dysfunction Statistically speaking, that's in the majority of our lives that we need and have to deal with. Jade Warshaw is in the building this Sunday. Jade is Church by the Glades family. She's a former worship leader and team member here at Church by the Glades, but a little over a year and a half ago, she joined the team at Ramsey Solutions. And Jade, every single day, is helping literally tens of thousands, if not even millions of people get financially free. So Church by the Glaze, do what you do best. Stand to your feet, put your hands together, raise your voice, and welcome to the stage, Jade Warshaw. Oh, you can do better than that. Thank you so much. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Go ahead and sit down, y'all sit down. Well, all right. Man, it's good to be here. I have to say, it's so good to be here. God is good. Like, can, can we just start with that? Like, God is so good. So, so good. It's a long time coming, you know. Thank you, Charlie, for the wonderful introduction. But, you know, Sam and I have been part of Church by the Glades. Like, this has been our home for a long time, uh, over a decade. Sam and I first came to Church by the Glades back in 2009. So technically, like, I'm an OG. Like, I'm an OG from the OWC, the original worship center, okay? Came back in 2009, sat in the back seat, like the, fur the furthest row back from the stage. And as the weeks would pass, we'd go a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer. And we ended up about front row, you know, middle center, kind of in that area. And I remember it was at that point that my husband leaned over to me and he said, hey, do you think that we would ever consider volunteering here or serving here? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, I don't wanna get involved because a lot of times you get involved in church, it's like, you see everything from your seat, right? And you're seeing these people up here and you're like, they seem cool, like they seem genuine, they seem nice. I don't wanna find out further. Like, I don't wanna get to know these people. I start serving, I start getting involved. You really get to know people. Let me tell you something. Here at Church by the Glades, what you see is what you get. These are some of the realest, best people that you will ever meet. 
get involved, volunteer. Pastor David and Lisa Hughes are two of my favorite people on the entire planet. I love their family, Zane, Charlie, Victoria. I love them so much. They've done so much for me. They're family. They are family. So get involved. Church by the Glaze is a great place to give your time and your talent. And uh, I just want to make clear, this message today is not about giving your treasure, okay? This message today is about us wanting the best for you. And I'm going to share my story. But before I do, Pastor David called me up a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, Jade, it's Financial Peace University weekend, like FPU weekend. We're going to be talking about money. And you know Pastor David, he doesn't really like talking about money. He rarely does. As a matter of fact, every once in a while, Pastor Raul, our executive pastor, can convince him to maybe do like one message a year about money. And maybe if you're new here, you notice we don't even pass a plate. Like we'll never pass a, an offering plate because we just, we're just happy you're here. Okay, so two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Pastor David calls me up. He's like, Jade, this is the money series. You and Sam, you went broke. Maybe you can help him. <laughs> like, you guys were terrible with money. Maybe, maybe you picked up a few pointers. I'm like, say less, Pastor David. I'll be there. Like, I'll, I'll have that awkward conversation about money because I know what it feels like when your money goes out of control. I know what it feels like to have $460,000 of debt. My husband and I were 26 years old, and we had $460,000 of debt. Let me set this up for you. Um, it was summertime here in South Florida. I live in Tennessee now, but back then it was South Florida, summertime, and it was hot. And I remember we were driving down Sample Road, and I demanded my husband, pull the car over. Like, pull the car over. I can't take it anymore credit card companies had been calling my phone, debt collectors calling my phone, what felt like dozens of times, and it wasn't even noon. And so I just, you know, I couldn't take it anymore. I'd had it up to here. Our debt was suffocating us. It felt like a wild animal chasing after us, man, and it, it wanted everything, man. It wanted our hope, our joy, our future, our marriage. And no matter what, it just seemed like we couldn't get away fast enough, no matter what we did. Wow. And that wild animal, it was our debt, man. It was our debt, and no matter what, there was nothing that we could do. And that's how we found ourselves pulled over in an abandoned parking lot, oddly enough, behind a bank. <laughs> it's like irony. <laughs> it was hot, and I remember our car, it was an old Jeep Liberty, and it was old, and it was so hot outside, the AC was working so hard just to like barely blow like that lukewarm air on your face. It just makes you mad, right? It's not helping at all. Crying, sitting there wondering like, how did this happen? Like, how, how do we get ourselves into this mess? And yeah, I was upset about the debt, and I was crying because the debt, that was hard, but I think I was really crying because I was repeating the same cycle that I vowed I would never repeat. And there I was, repeating it. And it wasn't supposed to be like this. It makes me think about this scripture up here. Let's throw it on the screen. It says, your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Yep. Our debt was eating us alive. Wow. Like I related to that scripture so hard in that moment because I'm like, man, we're Sunday dinner. This debt is eating us alive. And it wasn't supposed to be like that. We were newly married. All right, we're like any other couple just searching for your happily ever after, right? And somehow we found ourselves in $460,000 of debt. That's suspiciously close to half a million dollars of debt, okay? I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, half a million dollars? Like, that's a bag. Like, that's a, that's a little bag, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of money. Half a million dollars of debt in. Just for the record, because I know some of you there, you're like, okay, Jade, like that doesn't sound like that bad. Like, have you seen the housing market? Like, you must have had a pretty nice house. No. <laughs> I'm talking about consumer debt. This is not a mortgage. Consumer debt. 280,000 of credit cards. Or, I'm sorry, 280,000 of student loan debt. And back then, nobody was talking about student loan forgiveness. Like, nobody was writing checks. This was during the, the, the Great Recession, if you remember that. $20,000 of credit card debt. You guys know about that. This, com this country is in deep credit card debt, over a trillion dollars of credit card debt between all of us. I mean, think about it. Raise your eyebrows if you've got credit card debt. 
your eyebrows now, your eyebrows. <laughs> and isn't it funny, like you can never just raise your eyebrows just, just keep a straight face. It's always like, mm, yeah, I did, uh, yeah, I got the credit card debt. We had two cars we couldn't afford. That's normal, you get out of school, you get you a new car, like that's normal. Six figures of debt is normal, okay? Down and dirty debt, consumer debt is normal. It's the type of debt where like honestly you've got nothing to show for it, but just a stupid look on your face. I know all about that. Matter of fact, some people say if you look closely you can still see the stupid. <laughs> Don't, you're not supposed to laugh at that, don't laugh at that. Thank you, Charlie, I'm glad you liked that joke. Six figures of debt is becoming normal. I read a stat that said the average millennial comes out into the workforce with $117,000 of debt. That's what the statistics tell us. So we know that debt, what culture tells us, how we spend our money, it pushes us into debt and it tells us that this is normal. But can I tell you something? Normal sucks. That's right. That's right. That's right. They're like, Jay, don't say that in church. Pastor David told me I could say normal sucks in church because it does. Normal is being in so much debt you can't function. Yeah. And I know all about that. Sam and I had so much debt, we couldn't afford just to pay the minimum payments on our debt every month. Wow. We had to pick and choose which bills we were gonna pay and which bills had to talk to the hand because the wallet ain't got any money. <laughs> like that's, that's how it was. I remember not having enough money for groceries and I would go to the grocery store on a Friday and I would knowingly write a bad check for groceries. Because you know, when they put the check in, they're not really verifying the funds, they're just passing it through there. And it was the weekend, so it wouldn't clear. I had till Monday. I had Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and all that time for Sam and I to maybe drum up some work, get some business, get that money into the account, and hopefully by Monday it wouldn't overdraw. Some of you are shaking your head like, yeah, Jade, I've done that. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And can I tell you something? It's illegal. Check kiting, that's what it's called. It's illegal and I didn't even know it. I was just trying to make things work. But that's what happens when you're in debt and that's what happens when you're desperate. You start doing crazy things to make ends meet when you're paycheck to paycheck. 67% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, meaning you can pay your bills, you can eat, and that's about it. I remember AT&T. Man, they were always cutting our phones off. We weren't paying the bill. <laughs> that's why they were cutting our phones off. And the few times that our phone was left on, it was blowing me up with 1-800-PAY-ME. Like, the bill collectors were just calling my number time after time, and so I learned to keep my phone on silent. And if that wasn't enough, I was embarrassed that even if it was on silent, it would light up still, and you could see 1-800, and so I learned to keep it face down. Some of you right now, you're like, Jade, I wish I could relate. Like, your situation sounds terrible. Like, you seem like you're just very irresponsible. That's fine. Go ahead and judge me. Like, I, I'm here telling my story, but here's what I know. There's a lot of folks in here right now that are like, I know exactly what you're talking about, Jade. Like, too many of you can relate to my story, and right now you know, like, debt is destroying your day-to-day -day life. Like, you feel debt eroding your future. You know it's happening. I don't have to tell you that debt turns blessings into burdens. Right. Yeah. We've all heard that proverb, the borrower is slave to the lender. Yeah. And here you are, you're like, listen, God opened the door for me and I got a new car and it's great. And then a couple months later, it's a burden, isn't it? That blessing turned into a burden. Oh, God opened the door for me and I finally got the loan. And you walked into the new house and you thought it was great. A couple months later when the AC broke and you didn't have any savings, turned that burden, that blessing into a burden. Debt creates rifts and barriers in our most meaningful relationships. You're fighting with your spouse, you're snapping off. When your daughter asks you for lunch money or things she needs for school, it's not your daughter, it's the stress, it's the burden, it's the anxiety you're feeling about your financial situation. Debt keeps us in jobs and relationships that we know are not good for us. How many people have stayed in a job that you know is bad for you? You know the boss is a jerk, but you stay in it because you make a little bit more money and that helps you make your payments. I know I'm talking to somebody. How many folks stay in relationships that you know are bad for you? You know you need to leave them, but you're not confident that you can handle things on your own. And so you stay in relationships that are bad for you. Man, debt turns otherwise free people into slaves. It reminds me of this verse right here. It says, the thief comes only 
to steal, kill, and destroy, I have come, read this with me, that they have life and have it to the full. There's one version I love that says, it's the thief's purpose. Like it's his only purpose to steal, kill, and destroy, but it's my purpose, talking about Christ, that they might have life and have it to the fullest. Now, let me, let me pause for a minute. Actually, it says that they have, may have a rich and satisfying life. I like that, rich and satisfying. But I wanna pause right there for a minute because I know there's people in the house, like you're like, Jay, this is my first time at church, like let alone church by the glades. I don't know how I feel about these Bible verses. Like I don't even know if I believe this. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. And honestly, for the moment, it doesn't really matter what your belief system is. I think when I laid out the criteria of what describes a thief, I think we can all agree that dead is a thief. Like dead is a thief. But what's crazy about it is the part that says Christ came. This thievery is going on, but Christ came that we might have life and life to the fullest, that we might have a rich and satisfying life. But I don't know about you, the word might, let's bring that back up. The word might is weird. Because where I come from, the word might doesn't mean will. Like it doesn't mean this is going to happen. Think about it. When you were a kid, right, you're a kid, you're driving down the road and you're like, mom, mom, dad, can we stop at McDonald's? And your, your parents go, we'll, we'll see. You're like, we'll see, oh my gosh. And so you're like, you're racking your brain, like how can I make this happen? Like compliment her hair, like tell her I made A's on my report card. Like you're trying to do anything to make it happen to turn that might into a will. And you wanna know that what that tells me? Ultimately, it's up to us. Like we gotta turn this around. We have to believe, okay, like this is the plan, this is the purpose, but ultimately it's up to us to go out and get it. Dave Ramsey, the goat of personal finance, would say it like this. He'd say, you gotta deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter. What? Wait a minute, Jade, you're talking about goats? You're talking about gazelles? Help me understand. I'll help you, Proverbs 6. Let's throw that on the screen. This is talking about people who get in debt, by the way. Proverbs is a great book on wisdom, a lot about money in there. It says, you've been trapped by what you said. You've been ensnared by the words of your mouth. You agreed to debt, basically. So do this, my son, read it with me, to free yourself, yourself, since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands. Go to the point of exhaustion, okay? Go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Keep going. Allow no sleep to your eyes, meaning you're going to work. No slumber to your eyelids, working day and night. Free yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter, like a bird from the snare of a fowler. I don't know about you, but for me, like that scripture talk for run and run fast. Like if death's chasing after me, trying to steal, kill, destroy my life, I gotta run. I gotta run for my life. Real talk. It took my husband Sam and I seven and a half years of running to pay off $460,000 of debt, but we paid off every single cent of it. Yeah. Yeah, you can clap for that. I'm gonna clap for that. I'm proud we did that. It took us seven and a half years, and we did it using the principles in Financial Peace University. That's what it all boils down to. That's why I'm here. Financial Peace University, you may have called it, heard it called FPU, or maybe you just know it as the baby steps. But here's what I want you to understand. It's a course, it's nine weeks. It's gonna teach you everything you ever needed to know about money. I'm talking to you today about debt, but Financial Peace University is about money. It doesn't matter if you have a little bit of money or a lot of money. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, even the money. And we are stewards of that. We gotta learn how to manage it correctly. And I don't know about you, but nobody taught me. Like, did y'all learn about money in high school? Did they teach you how to budget in college? Nobody taught me. And this is for you if you have never learned to manage your money. So if you don't do anything else today, the most important thing that you can do when you leave this room is go out to the lobby. I want you to sign up for Financial Peace University. We have classes that are in person here on campus midweek on the weekends, so it's convenient for you. And then there's also virtual classes that you can do live from the interwebs, right? You don't even have to go in. You can just go on those Zoom classes. Whatever you do, make this your time. 2024 has got to be different. The time is going to pass anyway. All right, we're gonna look up and be in 2025. Are you gonna be in the same situation? Or will, will you have changed it? You're either gonna be the same, worse, or better. That's right. So some of you are like, okay, Jay, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna sign up for Financial Peace University. Is there anything else? I'm gonna give you 
three takeaways because I want you to feel like there's things that you can do today. And there were three things that Sam and I did immediately. Like once we found out we were like burning up in debt, it's like, okay, what do we do? Here's the three things we did. You can do them today too. You can literally do thing one, thing two, and get started on thing three. Everybody say yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. Thing number one, you gotta stop borrowing money. That's it, like a one-point sermon. <laughs> you gotta stop borrowing money, draw a line in the sand today. And here's why. You can't solve a problem while simultaneously creating the problem. Yeah. Okay, and some of you are like, Jade, I, I get my debt, I pay my debt off. And then I go back into debt and I pay my debt off. And you're in this wheel and it's hard for you to make traction because you keep going back. Galatians 5.1 says this, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the same yoke of slavery. One, burden, one, one version says, don't let yourself be entangled again in the same yoke of slavery. Ooh, that hits. It's like, it's like if you were in a straight jacket and you've been just tied up by the straight jacket of debt and you've been working and you finally ugh, get free and you're like, yes, thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Ooh, is that a straight jacket? <laughs> let me get that, let me hold that, let me put that on. That's crazy. Okay, that's literally the definition of insanity, is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Draw a line in the sand and stop borrowing money. You can do that today. All right, thing number two, I love this one, live on a budget. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, live on a budget. You know what, wait, 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 wait. I told myself I was never gonna do this. Turn to your neighbor, listen. Can I tell y'all, I've been all over the internet and I'm seeing like these, these graphic posts that's like things that are in in 2024 and things that are out, right? And they're like, things that are out in 2024, skinny jeans, things that are in sweatpants. I'm like, okay, cool. You wanna know what I wanna add to the list? Turn to your neighbor. <laughs> Is it just me? Like 2020 did as well. They're like, in 2020, there's no more like fist bumps or turn to your neighbor and shake their hand. 2020 got rid of that. I don't know, Charlie, I think in 2024, I wanna get rid of the turn to your neighbor. Is it just me? I just wanna look forward in church. I don't wanna turn, I don't wanna turn to my right or my left. But you gotta get on a budget, okay? And I know when I said budget, a couple of you are like, oh my gosh, Jade, like your armpits started sweating, like you got bubblies in your tub, you know, you just got weird. Trust me, we're gonna teach you the right way to do a budget in Financial Peace University. Matter of fact, I wrote a book about budgeting. It's called Money's Not a Math Problem. Pick it up if you have some spare time. But budgets, think about it as custom organization for your money. Ooh, kind of like that. It sounds a little bit bougie. I like it. It sounds like we're doing something fancy. And if you feel like a budget has always been something that confines you and holds you back, just remember a budget doesn't confine your money. A good budget just defines your money. Like it gives definition. And you need that because think about it, man, your money, it's expensive, right? Think about that for a second. We take care of our Louis bags and we take care of our cars. We don't take care of our money. And our money might be the most expensive thing we have. Yes. Think about it, it costs us our time. It costs us time away from our family, time we could be sleeping. For some of us, it costs us our sanity we work so hard. Take care of your money. It's expensive, treat it with care. Make a plan for it with your budget. All right, we're living on a budget. What's thing number three? This is my favorite. We're gonna get out of debt using the debt snowball method. I know, I'm getting tactical right now. I'm getting practical because I want you guys to do this. You're like, Jane, what the heck is a debt snowball method? I'll tell you. It's really just you going home, listing out all of your debts from smallest to largest by balance, okay? Smallest balance to largest balance. That's how this works. Now, the moment I started talking about paying off the debt, you guys are like, whoa. I thought this was just like an inspirational message, Jade. I thought you were just telling us about you paying off your debt. You're telling me I have to do mine? <laughs> yes. Okay, Jade, well maybe, maybe when I feel motivated, like we just got into this year, so maybe when I build up the motivation, can I tell you something? Yeah. Motivation, it's a myth. That's right. Motivation is a myth. Matter of fact, motivation is what happens after you start. Like it's the after effect of starting something 
having done well on it, right? You feel that dopamine hit, you're like, I got it. I'm gonna keep going. That's what motivation is. So if you're waiting for motivation to start, you're gonna be waiting a long time. And so we see here that money is not mostly about math, because some of you are like, Jade, what if I did the interest rate first? No. We're trying to get these small wins. Everybody's got that little $200 debt. You can knock that out fast. And when you do that, it creates a win, which creates belief, which creates motivation, which allows you to see this thing through until completion. That's what this is about. And so you're going to list those debts out. And by the, by the way, debt is money that you owe to anyone for any reason, okay? Let me just throw that out there. Cause some of y'all, I'm like, pay off your debt. You're like, Jade, I don't have debt, except my car note. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, Jade, I don't have any debt. It's just my student loans. That's debt. It's money you owe to anyone for any reason. So I want you to go home today. And we've all got that stack of, you know, that pile in our kitchen, that stack of mail that we never open up, right? We've all got that, that drawer that we just shove the stuff into, okay? I want you to open the drawer. Let the moths fly out, because nobody ever goes in there. Pull out the bills. <sighs> Dust them off, all right? Open it up. And when you see the words outstanding, written in big red letters, yeah. it doesn't mean you're doing a good job. All right, it, it means you owe some folks some money and they want their money. Now, lucky for you, I happen to have Sam and I's list of debts here for you to take a look at on the screen. This is what $460,000 of debt looks like. This is a real deal Holyfield right now. Look at this, Capital One is on there so many times. <laughs> like what's in your wallet? Debt, <laughs> man. And they just kept lending us money. It's funny, you can see over there on the right column, that's when we started to get into the real nitty gritty is like car notes and student loans and oh my goodness. Victoria's Secret made the list. Probably the one time Victoria's Secret didn't help a marriage. Just saying. <laughs> it doesn't hit right when it's on debt, you know? It, doesn't, it just didn't hit right. So what we're gonna do here we're gonna list these debts out from smallest to largest, okay? And, and we're gonna make minimum payments on everything. You continue to make minimum payments because you don't want debt collectors calling you, right? So you make minimum payments, but then you take any and extra all money that you can get your hands on, you throw it at that smallest debt. I mean, you hit it with a vengeance until it's paid off. Then you take that money and you throw it on the next smallest debt, throw it! Yes, and you pay that one off and throw it at the next debt. Then you take that money, you throw it at the next debt, and before you know it, you have a nice little snowball rolling. Yes. And I can tell you, the more you accomplish, the more you believe is possible. It's that motivation at work. That's how this thing works. And some of you are like, okay, Jade, my problem is I just don't have a lot of money left over. Like, what do I do? I want to get the snowball thing going, but I don't have any money. The budget's going to help with that. You're going to find some money in the budget, but you might have to add some more income in. Side hustle. That's what Sam and I did. Man, we got after it with the side hustle. Now, let me call this out because it's important to note. Some people, you have a core income problem. You just don't make enough at your regular job. And that's a journey that you may have to go through. Sam and I did that. But some of us can just pick up a side hustle, Uber Eats, you know, Instacart, pick up something. Sam and I did everything we could. Michael Evans, do you remember Jade Bakes for you? I was selling cupcakes. I might have put like 10, 20 pounds on you. I'm sorry about that. I was selling cupcakes. We were teaching lessons to anybody who would take a voice lesson, a piano lesson, training dogs. Man, use your talent, use your passion, and make you some money. I remember I worked at Tent World. Yeah, you can clap for that, thank you. They're like, we're making money, go ahead. Do y'all y'all know about Tent World down here where you go to get your windows tinted? I used to work there as a side hustle. And the first part of the day, I'd go in and I'd put tint on people's windows. And then the last half of the day, they had like this giant work table set up. And I was like, whew, like cutting these big giant work letters. And we would go and install them on the side of work trucks. That's crazy. My, my knuckles were ashy because <laughs> it was hard work. But let me tell you something. If you're driving down the road and you see a big old truck that says like Bubba's Heating and Cooling, 
I need you to understand, I put Bubba on the map, okay? Like, I put Bubba in business, and that's what you need to do. You need to work at this. It took Sam and I seven and a half years to pay off our debt, but the average person, we've done deep research on this, the average person is out of debt in two years or less. Two years? Two years, man, that's a drop in the bucket. Now, let me tell you something. I've never been one for being average, but this is one time you want to be average, <laughs> all right? Two years, get it in two years. And some of you are like, Jade, but I tried it before, and I, you know, I got weary, and it was hard. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. But remember this, Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Some versions say, if you don't faint, come on now. Like, it's hard work. And sometimes you wanna faint, don't give up. I don't care what you're going through right now, it may have nothing to do with money. Don't give up. A word to the married couples, because Sam and I have been married, gosh, it's gonna be 17 years. 17 years in April, wow. May, also known as May. <laughs> Listen, April is the new May, that's what they're telling me, so. 17 years, and let me tell you something, when I first met Sam Warshaw, I was not asking him about his money nor his debt, because by the way, he's on the front stage, but if you can put, put, a, put, put a picture on the screen of Sam. Listen, I wasn't thinking about the money, because my guy is a snack, is all I'm saying, like. <laughs> it's like, he, he looks good, like, face card does not decline, you know what I'm saying, like, that's what they told me. But when he slid over and was like, hey, I have $230,000 of debt. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, that he's good looking. <laughs> thank you, God. It's all we had, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that was all we had. <laughs> but you wanna know something? I don't know if it was just being young and stupid or if I was just really wise. But when he told me that, I was like, okay, cool. You have $230,000 of debt. We have $230,000 of debt. Like, your debt's my debt, my money's your money. It's ours. And let me tell you something. Some of y'all, I need you to hear me loud and clear. Some of y'all, you need to do what I call a vocab rehab. All right, because I hear you. I hear y'all at home, and you're like, that's his car payment, and this is my paycheck, and, and that's your debt, and this is my savings. Y'all need to stop all that. You need to stop all that, because let me tell you something, if Sam Warshaw ever thought about waltzing into our house talking about, hey, you have the, ba you have the babies, but I'll have the bank account, what, what? Or like, we can, sleep, <laughs> we can sleep in the same bed, but you know, we can't share our bank account? Let me tell you something, you would not see Sam Warshaw ever again. <laughs> he, you'd be like, what happened to Sam? Like, it's an unsolved mystery, like he went to the moon, like we don't know where he went. <laughs> Some of y'all need to do a vocab rehab is all I'm saying. Get on the same page, you'll go further faster. And a lot of you say, okay, Jay, well, what's it feel like? You, you finally, you accepted his debt, you started paying the payments. Like, what did it feel like? Because it's hard to embrace a new lifestyle. And I can tell you what it feels like to pay off that first debt. Like, you finally get this thing going. And um, the best way I can think to describe it, have you ever seen those indoor rock climbing walls, right? They, I've always been afraid of them, but I decided to try it one time. So I go up to the wall, like they give you that awkward harness and you're putting on the harness. I'm like, okay, let's go. So I start climbing and at first I'm timid, but then I start like getting used to it. I'm like, oh, I got this. I start climbing, climbing. I'm getting really high up. And I yell to Sam, who's like safely down on the ground. I'm like, Sam, look at this. Like I'm going, I'm climbing. He's like, yeah. Cool. His voice was like really close to me, which was weird. And when I turned around to look at him, it turned out I had not scaled the heights. <laughs> I had not scaled the heights I thought I scaled, right? But that's the way it is, right? The point is, you're off the ground. Like you started, you're off the ground. There's nowhere to go but up. And it's your choice if you're gonna keep going or not. Keep going. Listen, I can tell you, that first debt, man, that's just a drop in the bucket. That's just a glimpse of how it's gonna feel. I remember what it felt like to pay off that first debt, but man, I remember exactly what it felt like to pay off that final debt and to finally celebrate freedom with Sam. Take a look at this. 
<laughs> Very well done. All right, it's Jade and Sam from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Four hundred and sixty thousand dollars <laughs> paid off in seven and a half years, making thirty to two sixty four. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, two one. We're, We're debt free. Yeah. Yeah. somebody man that never gets old never gets old no more angst no more frustration no more guilt no more shame no more sleepless nights only ease man you can't even say the word ease without smiling without exhaling and some of you, you're in the thick of it right now. You're like, Jade, I can't see that for myself. I'm a single mom. Or, Jade, I just graduated. Have you seen my student loan bill? I've seen it. I know about that. And I know if you continue, man, if you don't faint, if you don't give up, man, your moment to exhale is coming. And instead of being crushed by a pile of debt and frustration and shame and guilt, you're going to be standing on top of it. The victor, your freedom reclaimed, no longer running from an animal of debt, like a wild animal chasing after you, no longer a slave to the lender, but instead living a rich and satisfying life. Listen, the time is going to pass anyway. The time is going to pass anyway. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it like this, if you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. And if you can't walk, crawl, but by all means, keep moving forward. You got the message. It's the thief's purpose to steal, kill, and destroy, but it's Christ's purpose that you might have a rich and satisfying life. Listen, this is your opportunity to turn might into will. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much. Lord, I thank you that in the words of Pastor David Hughes, you turn bad breaks into big breaks, God. You take what's broken, God, and you fix it. You take messy things and you make them miracles. God, I pray that you would do this in this house. Father God, I pray that you would impress on people's spirits to change their life and their money and their marriages and their relationships this year. 2024 is their year, God. I pray that people would have the commitment inside of them to see it through to completion. In Jesus' name, we give you all praise, God. Amen.